Hey brother, welcome to day seven of 40 Days of Light. Let's start this morning in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where some years ago my wife gave me a gift of a week at a guest ranch. And yes, it sounds like city slickers. We actually did herd cattle. I spent 30 hours in the saddle in five days. But before we went out every morning, the wrangler who was there said, I want you to sit on your horse and pull back on the reins until he stops resisting and bows his neck bends his neck. That's a sign that he is submitting to you, the master. But what a great metaphor that is for us as disciples of Jesus. He is our Lord and master, and he wants to know every morning, do I bow my neck? Am I willing to submit to his counsel? Where he takes me sometimes places that I wouldn't go naturally or places I don't even want to go. So here we have this principle from the apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men. This is God's counsel to the living church. Now, hold on. I know that this does not have absolute authority over us. Peter himself defied the authority of the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 5 when he said, we must obey God rather than men. And we're going to deal with some of those <clears throat> instances uh, as we walk through this week. But here he is 30 years later, and he's writing to people who are displaced from Israel. They are aliens spiritually, politically, and culturally, kind of like what we feel in our own culture. They're under Roman governance and immersed in a foreign culture. And this culture and this governance does not always distribute justice and wisdom the way it ought to. So is he counseling appeasement to this? No, Peter is saying the kingdom of God can function and thrive despite the weaknesses and faults of human governance. Because the primary objective of the kingdom of God in us, that Christ in us, is to remake you, to remake me from the inside out. And then for us to replicate ourselves through his witness, in making new disciples. This is submission to the Master and Lord, to make disciples, to be witnesses, to teach everything he taught us until he comes. So we live in the already and not yet environment of the kingdom of God. Well, why is this counsel given to us? Let me give you three brief reasons. Number one, it's pragmatic, because in the first century, if the Christians resisted, if they insisted that they would not follow Rome, they would have been eliminated. There would have been butchery and extinction. The second reason is personal, because God is asking us to submit, and the kingdom advances with different weapons than the world uses. The kingdom is in you. It's an attitude of peace it's a, a wisdom of priority. It's a way that we walk in a way that we're not picking fights. What we're trying to do is portray the kingdom and the king in our walk of life. And thirdly, it demands patience from us because God's program is not under our control. We don't bring in the final kingdom. He has the timing. Jesus himself said, I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. So we use the power of our influence and example to portray him. Well, in the ancient world of Israel, they were taken captive to Babylon. And here was their counsel in Jeremiah 21. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I've sent into exile, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, Seek the welfare of the city where you are. Well, let's do that today. Let's seek the welfare of the city. Let's live the kingdom of God, submitted to him and obedient to authority as much as we can. God bless you.